it's good to be back with you. And in this video, I'd like to tell you about my new guitar. This is a Guild F250E that I've had for a couple of weeks now. And I really like it quite a lot. thought it would make a pretty good video. So let me tell you a little bit about the guitar itself. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to upgrade it a little bit, which is even cooler. So the guitar itself, this is a, this is a Guild uh, Jumbo. This is a, about the biggest uh, guitar in the Guild lineup. And this is their uh, kind of entry-level Jumbo. Their, their uh, other Jumbos are around $2,000. This one I got from Amazon for uh, with uh, uh, tax, not no shipping because we have uh, Prime. But with tax was, I think, $587, I think. So not super low entry-level, but not bad. It's a lot of guitar for the money, and I, I recommend it. A little bit about the guitar itself. For starters, this is big. This thing is an absolute beast of an instrument. Here's one I made that's basically an OM. It's a little bit of a modification, but this is essentially an OM. It's the same size. And here's the uh, Guild F250E, this jumbo body. The body on this one's a little over uh, 19 inches long. This one's like 20, some, 20 and some change, I think. So even though they have the same scale length, this is a lot bigger instrument. And you can tell from the, the, the depth, too, so we get that lined up. The body depth on this maxes out at about four inches or so. This one's a lot deeper, and it shows in the sound. This one's got this big, booming bass in it that you expect from a, uh, a large guitar like this. Like I say, this one I made, love this one, sounds really good, but it's different. It's got a different voice than this Guild which is, I, like I say, I do like it. I, you go, go check one out. Let me tell you a little bit about the guitar itself. The body is, uh, the top is made out of solid Sitka spruce, and the, this particular piece is a nice tight grain. It's a, it's a really nice piece of wood. The sides and the back are wavy maple, and it's got this cool sort of uh, antique sort of sunburst looking finish on it. It does have electronics on board, although you can't really see it here. You know, there's no, there's no control panel there. There's the battery box and the output right there. And then the controls are actually inside the sound hole here. There's two little, there's a tone and a volume wheel in there. And this is kind of nice because it gets it out of the way. When you're playing, there's no problem at all. Just stick your finger in there and, and uh, make whatever change you want. Um, it's 25 and a half inch scale length, I think. And so that's, that's pretty normal. That's the long scale you see on guitars that you see on Fender. That's what it is on that one I just showed you. So it's nice and comfortable, it's familiar. Um, this thing has the big, this trademark uh, Guild headstock. They, they use a very large headstock as kind of their signature, and this one has it. Feels fine, looks fine. Um, one of the nice features about it is it's got these open back tuners on it. Normally you see cast tuners on a guitar, and these are the, the old fashioned open back ones. And these are 18 to 1 uh, gear ratio, so you get a little bit more fine tuning on these than you'd normally get. The ones on that guitar, and I think the ones on my Taylor A12 back there, probably 15 or 16 to 1. I guess I've never really counted. Um, I'm not sure what the neck is. It looks like some flavor of mahogany. It's hard to tell. And the, uh, the fretboard, it eh, could be ebony, could be something else. Mechanically, it's probably equivalent to ebony. It's a nice dark hardwood. Maybe uh, some stain of some other, uh, they may have taken some other wood and stained it, but that's fine. It's uh, uh, real nice. The neck is bound, and uh, the uh, got a nice, uh, the nut in there looks like it's micarta or something like that, and so is the saddle. A uh, dark colored bridge, probably not ebony, probably something else that's been dyed, but that's fine. And uh, overall, I really do like it. Now, I mentioned that it's, I think, $587, I think is what I paid for it off of Amazon. Um, normally, I go to Sweetwater. Sweetwater is by, by far my favorite uh, source of instruments or anything musical, and I pretty much need a reason to go anywhere else. Well, this time the reason was they were out of these. I'm shooting this during the COVID lockdown. This is October of 2020. It's actually October 20th, I think. And everybody who's ever thought about playing a guitar apparently has gone out and bought one. So the guitar industry has more orders than they know what to do with. And people are starting to run out of guitars to sell. Well, apparently Sweetwater uh, ran out. But if you're anywhere near Fort Wayne, Indiana, and you get a chance to go to the Sweetwater, that freaking campus they've got, go check it out. But leave your credit card in the car. You've been warned. Okay, I can't take responsibility for what happens if you bring your credit card into that store. That's, that's all on you. 
So anyway, um, love the guitar, but it's not perfect. There are two things about it I really want to change. Now, um, in case you don't know my background, I'm really a guitar maker. I teach uh, uh, instrument design and manufacturing at Purdue, one of the things I teach there. I write books on guitars, and I make guitars. Well, you know, you can tell from that intro, I may spend a lot more time making guitars than I spend playing guitars. I can play them enough to get by, but I'm not, you know, I'll never be on stage or anything. Making them is kind of, that's my jam. So, two things I noticed about this. When I went to, uh, to change strings on it, it came with a nice set of strings, but I noticed that uh, the, the two plain strings had a little corrosion on them. Fine, I've got lots of strings. So I swapped them out. And I noticed two things. Number one, the, uh, the uh, bushing, the tuner bushing up there was a little loose. Okay, figured I'd check that out. And the other one, I noticed the uh, pegs there. So when I took the strings off, I noticed this headstock has been drilled for uh, it's either three eighths or ten millimeter, depending on the on where you are. But it's been drilled for cast tuners. Apparently, that's just how they do it in the factory, and they either put the cast tuners or these tuners in them. These have a basically quarter inch post on it, six point three five millimeters in metric, and uh, they'll certainly fit in the larger holes. But they need this bushing in them, so apparently that's what they did. When I took the, the strings off, I noticed these tuners are kind of loose. Now, it holds tune fine. It works fine. But come on, I'm not the kind of guy who's going to leave well enough alone just because something works fine. So I'm going to upgrade it. So how am I going to upgrade it? Well, put this down here for a second. I'm going to do that hitting that other guitar. There we go. There is another place that I go to for stuff called Stuart McDonald, or just stumac.com, S-T-E-W-M-A-C. They're uh, one of my favorite guitar parts suppliers. I use them and LMI, Luthiers Mercantile. Those are the two I go to almost always. Mostly, though, I go to Stumac. So, this box came today. This is, this is the Stumac box, and it's got some stuff in it that I thought I could tell you about here. Let me get the box open again. So what I bought was a brand new set of Grover Stay Tights. These are also 18 to 1 open back tuners. They're a little higher quality than the ones that are on there now. I use these a lot, almost exclusively anymore. They're, they're really good. The quality is quite good. The price is pretty reasonable for high quality tuners. And they should be pretty much a, a, a one to one swap with those. Well, it comes with tuner bushings, and I wasn't sure if I needed uh, a slightly larger bushing, so Bill. Um, so what I also got in here is I've got some slightly larger tuner bushings designed especially for this purpose, to take that 10 millimeter hole and make it compatible with that tuner. So I've got two different sets of bushings to work with here. One of them is going to work fine. And the other thing you can kind of see in here, um, those tuning, those uh, bridge pins down there, are just plain old cheap plastic bridge pins. It's the same one everybody uses. Um, these, these things down here, they work fine. There's nothing probably wrong with them. Um, but they looked a little chewed up when I pulled them out. They were a little bit uh, uh, deformed on the bottom. So I figured, well, while I'm at it, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll change the bridge pins out. So right there in this package is a nice set of brand new Waverly uh, bridge pins. So these are These are pretty nice. And so I'm going to put those in as well. Just, just to make sure you understand, this guitar is fine. It plays fine. Um, but, come on, we can always make it better. Oh, the one thing I should uh, mention before we go downstairs in my little shop and start taking uh, uh, strings off this guitar and swapping parts out, that $587 price got me a pretty good guitar. I thought it was pretty good value for the money, but it doesn't include a gig bag or a case. Now I checked on Sweetwater and they have a Guild brand jumbo gig bag which is designed for this, should be fine. Looks like it's a pretty good design, looks like the quality is pretty good. And it was something like $75 or $80, something like that. Which is about what you'd expect for a good gig bag these days. So it, when you buy the guitar, you're going to need to spend a little extra for a case or a gig bag. Now with all that out of the way, let's go downstairs in my little shop and let's start upgrading this guitar. Okay, here we are set up now in my little shop. I've got the um, Guild guitar, the F250E, uh, stuck into my Luthier's vise. 
I've got the camera set up actually on my CNC router table next to a guitar I'm building. So I'm going to stand up here because you don't need to see me. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. So up here, the headstock of course. And we're going to got my tools over here. First thing we're going to need is a tuner wrench. So I'm going to loosen the strings. Going to cut them off. I hate to uh, lose a new set of strings, but that's the only way to, to practically to change the uh, uh, tuners on it. And I got this little giz from uh, Stumac. This is a bridge pin puller. Um, this thing has a little notch on it here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little notch. You're supposed to be able to go in and grab the bridge pins and pull them out that way. Wrench, lever them out. And it does work, but sometimes it leaves a little mark on the bridge. Um, I've got another tool I got from, uh, I think this one's from LMI. This is another little plastic bridge pin puller. There it is. And this thing's pretty slick. It, it opens up this way. Works pretty well. Opens up like that and you just, you just pop it on like that and pull. So this thing works pretty well, but I figured I'd, I'd try this one too. Comes a little thing, I guess they expect you to carry it around in your pocket. So first thing I gotta do is loosen the strings. And all the way, because this is, there's no practical way to, to change strings or to change tuners without cutting the strings off it. I, I guess if you're enough of a cheapskate, you can, but they're just strings. It's not, it's not worth it. And always, always loosen tension before you cut the strings. There's a lot of strain energy in there and you don't want the string popping and, and hitting your hand. It really stings. Or, or worse yet, maybe hitting your eye. That'd be, that'd be really bad. So I've got my little side cutters here and I'm just going to cut these things off there. I hate to, like I said, I hate to lose a set of new strings, but it's not worth trying to save them right now. Okay, so that's now I gotta unwrap them from the the uh, tuning posts here. So pull those off, and uh, next thing we'll do is we'll get the bridge pins out, and we'll get the uh, ball end of the strings off the guitar. So there's that. Now these things, these little pieces of wire I've got here, the, the ends on those things are sharp, so be careful and you can stick yourself with them. And I'm here to tell you, it's just not much fun. So let's try this thing. You pull that on, and I should be able to just pop those bridges. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like this. This is, just so you can see what I've got here, it's this little sort of keychain looking thing. Here, maybe that's a better view. That uh, Stumac sold. It's pretty cheap, too. It's like two, three bucks. So it's, this, this thing actually looks like it's going to work pretty well. This might be a good, uh, good addition to the workshop. So yeah, just pop right out. I like these. I like this. Wish I'd thought of it. There's that. And uh, there's that. One more. Okay, the bridge pins are all out. And there's the ball ends of the strings out. Just about lost that one. There we go. So there's the ball ends gone. And uh, these are these are the bridge pins that came with it. There's nothing really wrong with them. But they're these little plastic bridge pins, so I'm going to replace those while I'm at it here. So, to go up here to the headstock, let's see if I can maybe change that. There we go, maybe that's a better view of the headstock here. And uh, so here's the, here's the thing I noticed. Those, those tuner bushings just come out. I just lifted that out with my finger. And they're supposed to be tighter than that. You're not really supposed to be able to do that. And you can see right there. There's that. There's that 10 millimeter, uh, 10 millimeter hole that's that's drilled in. If I can get my fingernail under these, these just pop right out. So they're they're not in there very tight. And what I noticed is this. It's just cocked at just a little bit of an angle when I when I strung the guitar up. Again, to be clear, the guitar plays fine. It tunes fine. This is not a defect in the guitar. I don't mean to suggest that at all. It's just we can make this better. So. Guitar is ready to go here. Next thing will be to, to do will be to flip the guitar over. In fact, we can do that right now. Careful. And I've noticed I've got my carpet pad here because I don't want to scratch my nice new guitar. And I've uh, got everything else set up here. I've got my, my nice Grover Stay Tights. Love these. Use them a lot. I recommend them. 
got my, these are called, uh, what are these called? These are called conversion bushings from Stumac. They're part number uh, 3458. I haven't tried these before, but there they are from Stumac. And uh, got my nice Waverly uh, slotted bridge pins there, so those are going in too. So the next thing I'll need to do is take, there's, there's two screws that hold each one of the, these tuners in. Um, I'm going to do two things. It's a little late tonight and I'm getting tired, so I'm going to, we're going to do the rest of this uh, tomorrow evening after work. And I'm also going to take the camera and I'm going to move it back over onto my table saw there and we'll, we'll look at this from the other direction. So hello again. Another day's gone by and I'm ready to change out these tuners. You can see I've already pulled one out just to make sure they're easy to get out and then make sure that the uh, Grover Stay tights will drop right in. Looks like they will. So that's good. So first thing here, I'm just going to undo these screws here. There's two screws holding each of the tuners in, and these are really small, they're number two screws. So I got I put a little tiny tip on my uh, ratcheting screwdriver here. Let's, let's uh, start by backing all those out. Okay, so there we are, and I just want to let you know what I'm, what I'm doing with the parts here. I'm putting them in these little Ziploc containers. Got these at the grocery store. They're actually made for storing food, but these are just the best things ever for little collections of parts. Um, they stack really well. They're really cheap. Four of them is about a little less than three dollars, and uh, helps me prevent me from losing things. Now, before I said the tuners were loose, and I guess I should be clear what I meant. It wasn't that they were loose on the guitar. They were screwed on fine. It's just that the, the, the tuner parts themselves are loose. I mean, this, this, uh, this, this post here isn't connected very well. It's a little loose. And it's, I mean, it's okay. It's not, like I said, the guitar tunes fine. I'm wondering if it's the tuner post. Oh, the tuner post was, just, that little screw there was just loose. Okay. So yeah, that tightens up, but it's still, it's still got some slop in it. Okay, it's okay. I mean, it's, it, it's functional. It's not a bad tuner. It'll work okay. And, uh, but I'm going to replace them with the stay tights just the same. The other thing I want to note is these, these uh, let's see, eight little, uh, sorry, 12 little holes where those number two screws went in. That wood looks pretty soft. There was a little bit of dust coming out of it. So since I'm replacing the screws anyway, I'm going to put a little bit of super glue in each one of those holes just to give the new screws something to bite on. And the way I'm going to do that is I've got these cool little, I believe the technical word for this is a dingus. I'm going to use some number 10 super glue from Stumac, which is the really uh, thin stuff. And this little giz, it looks kind of like a toothpick, has an end on it with some little openings. And what you can do is you can put super glue on that and you can very precisely put it just exactly where you want it. I discovered these a little while ago. There's what, let's see, let me show you. There's what it looks like sitting on the, I can't see that. There's what it looks like. And these, are, these things are great. Look, they look like they're probably reusable too. So I'm going to go ahead and I've already put glue in those two. I'm going to put glue in the others. Here's how you do that. You get a little dab on there. A little dab will do you. And you just drop it right in there. And the uh, capillary forces just pull it in. And it's nice and precise. You don't slop glue everywhere. There's no runs. It's, this is great. So my props to whoever thought of this. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go here. Now one thing I'm going to do is just uh, pop those little uh, uh, 
bushings out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little 3 8 dowel here. It's easier just to come in from the back and I can just about push them out with my hand. That way I don't, I don't scratch the front of the guitar. You see I, I popped one out a minute ago and that's just because I spilled a little super glue in there and I didn't want to glue the, glue the old bushing in. The other one's on the floor somewhere. So with that, I'm going to put these back in my little container here, make sure I keep all my parts. And then um, I'm going to flip this over and uh, put the new bushings on. All right, so I've got all the, the bushings taken out now. And one of the things I've noticed is inside those, those holes there, it's a little bit messy. There's a little bit of excess wood in there. Completely normal for a production guitar. That's, that's not a flaw. What I'm going to do here to clean it out is I'm going to ream those out, but I'm going to do it with this. This is a tapered reamer. It's actually for uh, putting in uh, wooden pins in cellos and uh, on flamenco guitars. That's why I have it. And I've got a piece of tape marked here, and that tape tells me how far down to go so that I'm at the right uh, width for my little adapter bushings here. So. I'm going to go in like this and very, very carefully, very slowly, just turn this until the tape touches the headstock. And no point in hurrying here. This just, this just takes time. Sorry about the squeaking. I don't want to lubricate it because I don't want to get oil into the wood, wax or anything. So there we go. Just about there. And... It's just touching, so there we go. And all I did was just clean up some of the excess wood that's in there. So offline, I'm going to go finish the remainder of these. Okay, I've moved the camera a little bit here, so we got maybe a little bit better view of the headstock. Um, uh, the, the holes are all cleaned out here, and the fit is just perfect. It's just exactly what we want. Now, in doing that, I've exposed a little bit of the wood here. There, there was a little bit of finish inside those holes, which is normal. That's, that's part of the production process. But now I've got bare wood in there, and I'm not, not a huge fan of that. So I've got a little uh, can or a little uh, cup here of de-waxed shellac. That I, I buy shellac flakes and mix it with alcohol to make a de-waxed shellac, which is a, I use as a sanding sealer. And all I'm doing now is going inside those, those holes with a little paintbrush and uh, just putting a little bit of shellac in there to seal that wood up so that it's maybe a little less sensitive to uh, changes in humidity or anything like that. Just I'm probably being a little bit excessive here, but it sure doesn't hurt. And I've got a little uh, paper towel here to make sure that if, the, if a little bit of the shellac drips through it doesn't get on the nice finish on the back of the headstock. So that's looking really good. So I'm going to finish do, doing that and then uh, next we'll just pop those bushings back in, flip it over, put the tuners in. Okay, everything looks good here. The uh, new bushings are in and they're just perfect. That tapered reamer just did a really, really nice job. And it's worth noting that the, the bushings themselves are tapered. That's the reason I picked that tapered reamer. I have a straight barreled reamer, but uh, the, the tapered one uh, gives me a lot tighter fit. They're, they went in with just a little bit of a tap. You, want, you don't want to push them in too hard. You don't want to tap them too hard because you could crack the headstock doing that. So I got them so they would just about seat finger tight and gave them just a little bit of a tap with a dead bull hammer and they went in and they, they all fit really, really nicely. So I'm ready to flip this thing over and we'll uh, put the new tuners in. So here I am ready to put the new tuners on. And these are the Grover Stay Tights. And uh, I noticed one thing in here. It drops right in as it should. And that hole right there lines up. This one doesn't. The one on the top does not line up. Okay. And one of the unfortunate truths about the guitar world is nothing is standardized. Even though Grover Stay Tights are on the Guild website, these Grover Stay Tights don't quite fit the pre-drilled holes. Well, that's not the biggest problem in the world. And the stock answer for this is to plug the holes and re-drill. Well, what do you plug them with? This works as well as anything. These are toothpicks made out of hard wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of super glue in that hole right there. I'm going to push that in 
very carefully trim it off, and then I'm going to re-drill each of the, the top hole here for the uh, Grover State Tight Tuners. We'll put those in and we'll be good to go. So give me a minute while I do that. So the new tuners are in. They look great. Um, I re-drilled those holes. Everything's nice and tight and smooth. Everything fits really well. Nothing's loose. So I think this is going to work out really well. Let's go to the bridge pins now because there's a story here. Okay, so here we are with the bridge. You can see that I've taken the saddle out. This is a just the saddle that went in it. fits in uh, like that. And that little kind of wire under there, you can see under there, that's the piezoelectric pickup. So this is that's the, the, the sensing element there. So this is all, all fine. This is all just as it should be. We've got a problem though. Well, an opportunity maybe. I don't know. Here's the bridge pin, one of the bridge pins that came out of it. Here's one of the ones I want to put in. Now, if you are uh, got a sharp eye, you can see that this one and this one are different. This one is narrower and it's close. the edges are closer to being parallel. This one's a little wider on top and it's not close to being parallel. This is a three degree taper bridge pin. This one, the one I bought, this is the Waverly, is a five degree taper bridge pin. Did I mention that nothing in the guitar world is standardized? Bridge pins come in two different sizes. Probably more than that, but the two that I know of. And you can see this one's a little bit, a little bent, and it's got, it's kind of chewed up. It'll work fine, but I you know, figure I might as well change it while I'm at it. Here's the problem. I can't find three degree bridge pins anywhere uh, on Stumac or any other sites. I, probably, I, I could probably find one somewhere if I troll around the internet long enough. These don't seem to be used much anymore, as far as I can tell. Now, maybe somebody's using them. They, they, I guess they must. Stumac only sells five degree pins. I couldn't find three degree pins anywhere on them. Well, this drops right in. Well, actually, that one doesn't, but dropped in over here. Okay, so it drops in fine. This one, I can't get it out now. There we go. This one doesn't. It, it, it sticks. Well, you can't really see it there, but it sticks way up because it's the wrong size and it's the wrong taper. So, do I put these back in? Do I go out somewhere and try to find three degree pins? Somebody's got to sell them. Or do I ream this out so that it can take the five degree pins that everybody uses and now sells? Well, uh, we could do either one. How about that? That is a five degree bridge pin reamer that I just happen to have. It's actually one of two that I have. So there you go. I'm thinking I may want to ream this out so it takes five degree pins so that I can I, I have more choices if I ever decide to replace them again. Um, I've already voided the warranty on this thing anyway, so it's not like I'm going to be out much. And I kind of like monkeying with guitars. The responsible thing to do, the safe, cautious thing to do is to put those back in. But I don't want to do that. This is why we can't have nice things. Okay, if you're going to void the warranty, you should do it like you mean it. This is a round file. And one of the things you can do to slightly improve the, uh, the uh, geometry of the strings is to file a little groove in the front of the bridge pin slot for the string. You can actually change the, the break angle over the bridge a little bit, but it also allows the make sure that the bridge pin will seat well. So I'm going to finish doing that as well. Okay, so there, I've got notches on the front of all those uh, bridge pin holes. I mentioned earlier, I didn't think this was eb the bridge was ebony, and it's not. I mean, the, the, when I uh, file those little notches, the dust that's coming out of there is brown and not black. This is fine. This is not a defect. It's not a flaw. Um, 
it's whatever wood this is is plenty hard it's going to work just fine and the black is just there for aesthetics and that's that's i'm completely cool with that so that's that's not a problem at all so all i got to do now is blow the crunchies out of it from uh, the reaming tool and let's string this thing up and see what it sounds like okay we're ready to go all i got to do now is put some new strings on it so i've got a nice set of diderio uh, phosphor bronze flat tops and these are strings where the, uh, the winding has been polished a little bit. It's a little bit flat on it. So when your fingers rub up and down the strings, they don't make that icky noise. Now, if I was a better player, probably wouldn't need these. But trust me, I need these. Now, this is what came off the guitar. So I'm going to put another identical set back on. These are lights. These are size 12. So the, the uh, treble E string is 12 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Um, we'll probably try 13s eventually, but uh, these, these sounded fine, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with what uh, worked before. So now it's just putting strings on a guitar. We know how to do that. Okay, here it is. Strings are on it. They sound great. The bridge pins look good. The tuners are great. Love them. The guitar sounds really good. Of course, it sounded good before, but I like it just all the more now. Um, one other little thing I don't think I mentioned is uh, that Guild has a deal right now, at least as I'm shooting this, that um, if you, when you get one of their guitars, if you uh, fill out an online review, they'll uh, send you a, a little freebie. And so I got this cool tuner. It's interesting. It turns on when you clip it on. So there, it just turned on. And I'm a little, little flat here just because it's a new string. And take it off. Turns off. Pretty slick. And just so you know, I didn't leave them a, four star, a five star review. I left a four star review uh, because of the tuners. But I uh, was pretty careful to say that I really do like this guitar. So, all done. It's been upgraded. Got uh, new five degree Waverly Bridge pins up there. Got brand new uh, Grover Stay Tight 18 to 1 tuners and some fresh strings. And a little spiff tuner. So, hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.